Do you ever feel like you don't belong? Like somehow you got to where you are through smoke and mirrors and they're gonna find out about you and maybe even kick you out of the program. This is an all too common feeling in graduate school. There's even a psychological term for it, imposter syndrome. I'm Professor David Stuckler at University of Baconia in Milan and I know these feelings all too well. Almost all of my graduate students, all of my postdocs have dealt with those exact same senses that they don't belong. And when I was a, an undergraduate, I went to a very small school in Texas. And for my master's, I went to Yale. And I remember struggling with these feelings. I felt like a fish out of water. I felt out of place. I thought everybody was so much smarter than me that I couldn't keep up and that, that they were gonna discover that I didn't really belong there. And I wanna give you the strategies to deal with this. And you're gonna to want to watch this video because if you don't deal with this imposter syndrome, it is like a cancer that can grow inside of you. It can paralyze you and slow down your progress, making your graduate studies so much harder because you're not only fighting to get things done, but you're gonna be fighting a battle with yourself. But if you follow the steps that I suggest for you, not only are you gonna nip this in the bud, but you're gonna unleash potential that you may not have even known that you had. So uh, stick around, you're gonna to wanna to listen to me so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did in my path going from Yale to becoming a professor and now having written several books and published over 300 articles in top journals. So the very first thing to do is to accept these feelings. It's harder to do than you might think, but accept them because they are actually a positive sign. They're a sign of growth. If you didn't push yourself, if you weren't stretching your boundaries, stretching your limits, you wouldn't be feeling like an imposter. You wouldn't get these feelings that you don't belong or that you're a fraud. If it were easy, everybody would do it. So when you encounter these feelings of imposter syndrome, which is a common thread in so many of the professors I work with who eventually went on to great success, when you encounter these feelings, it is a sign, a healthy one, of growth. The second thing that you need to do is a practical step. You need to take the time to remember what you're proud of. You need to remember your successes, the very things that got you to where you are in the first place. Take a moment, even now, and think about what are you proud of? Don't lose sight of that. The third step, because these thoughts uh, of not belonging and, and feeling like a fake they're gonna come up again and again like a bogeyman out of the closet that it's like whack-a-mole. You, you beat down these thoughts and they pop right back up. So you need to be armed with a strategy for when it happens, when you feel inadequate. And what I suggest is make a list. List the 10 reasons that you are as qualified as everybody else in your program, everybody else in your position. And whenever that bogeyman or that whack-a-mole pops up, this is this list, I want you to look at it and remind yourself why you're qualified so that you whack it right back down immediately and don't start suffering the consequences that grate at the inside of you and cause you self-doubt. The fourth thing, really important, is to find mentors. Look, the phrase, no man or woman is an island, is really true. So often we emphasize this great person in history who had this brilliant genius and knowledge that may enable them to make great profound discoveries, but this is just a myth. This is a lie. This is a caricature of the real history. Ask any Nobel Prize winner, ask any top person in their field, and I guarantee you they have had a lot of help, support, and investment from other top people along the way. Your goal is to find effective mentors that can guide you in this journey. And when you have these feelings, be open about them. Uh, there is no shame in it, and I guarantee you, it's very likely that they've had those same struggles that you're grappling with now. Find effective mentors is one of the most important tips for combating imposter syndrome. Last tip, you want to build confidence. You wanna take steps to build a strong foundation that you can stand on, to build those successes and wins you can be proud of and you might feel very small right now, 
But when you get these wins, you'll feel a little less small and a little less small. And I can tell you as a professor today, when I see many greats out there, there are times that it will happen to you as successful as you are, that you will perpetually feel small, you will feel humbled, and you will be in awe and admiration of the remarkable talent uh, around you. Um, this, I thought, would end at Yale, but it happened to me again when I became a professor at Harvard, uh, when I later then became a professor at Oxford, even though I had tenure. So how can you build this kind of confidence, a foundation, a core of confidence? Well, in your graduate program, there are some quick wins. One I recommend that can take you from being a novice to an expert in the quickest time possible is to do a systematic review. And I've got a link below to another video on how you can become an expert fast and also how you can find effective mentors. Uh, so thanks for watching um, and just join us. Remember to click subscribe for more tips and comments. Send me your questions on how we can help you accelerate your graduate and academic career.